Well, good evening. I want to welcome you to In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. And I tell you guys, I am so excited to be with you on this evening. I tell you, we're going to have an awesome time on tonight. My lovely wife, uh, she's right now, she's just a little um, tired. Uh, she said just had a long weekend and a very busy day today. And so, you know, I told her, you know, go ahead and rest up because I'll need you to be fresh when you're up here, you know, ready to roll. And so she's just going to, uh, she's resting her body. And uh, I'm with you guys and I'm excited. I'm telling you guys, we're just going to have an awesome time. Uh, we're going to share some information. We're going to build some lives. We're going to empower some people. And so I just want you guys to get ready, grab a pen, a piece of paper. There are some things that we're going to discuss that's just going to be flat out life building. When I say life building, I'm talking about these things that we're going to discuss on tonight. This is going to revolutionize the way you think, the way you thought, and the way you're going to see things going forward. And so listen, if you are a blended family, if you're intending on being a blended family, if you know of a blended family, you want to contact them and say, listen, In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman is live on the air. They want to be a part of this. They want to get this information. Also, you want to grab a pen, a piece of paper, because there are going to be a lot of notes that we're going to take. And so you want to make sure that you do not miss out on this information. And I'm telling you guys, I, I am just so ready. Tonight, we're going to be talking about, and we talked about this before, but we're going to talk about it again because it's one of those topics that are just inexhaustible. One of those topics that you can just talk about again and again and again and again, and it does not run out. <laughs> when I tell you guys, it does not run out. It does not run out. And so tonight, um, we're talking about deal breakers versus things that break the deal. And one of the reasons why we're going to talk about this on tonight, because I was in a, I was in a business meeting uh, yesterday. And so, and I, I'm not always, I'm always uh, keeping my ears uh, intended to the voice of God as it relates to uh, in the blender, because there are some topics, there are some things that I may need to discuss or I may want to discuss. And then I'll find out, you know what, let's go this avenue or let's go this route because this is going to be more impactful. And so I was uh, in a business meeting yesterday and I was sharing some of the things that I'm personally doing. And so when I was talking to one of the partners, um, I was sharing with him, you know, our broadcast. And one of my favorite episodes was the deal breakers versus things that break the deal. And so he found it very intriguing. I was like, really? Like, what's that all about? And I was explaining to him, I said, well, in, in life and relationships, there's always deal breakers. I don't care what relationship it is. I don't care what type of relationship it is, uh, how long you've been in that relationship, uh, how far you want to go in that relationship. There's always going to be deal breakers. There's always things that we have set up going into any type of relationship that we say, you know what, if this happens, it's over. If this happens, it's done with. If this happens, we can't go forward. There's always these type of things. But then there are things that we find out as we're in the relationship that makes us come to a position to say, you know what, we can't go any further. I'm not going to tolerate that. I'm not going to deal with that. I'm not going to accept that. And so those are the deal breakers versus the things that break the deal. But what I found out is that there are some deal breakers that for some are things that break the deal. And then there are some things that break the deal that are for some deal breakers. And so these things, they vary, they're interchangeable. And so I want to make sure that we cover them so you can really take an introspect on your life and your marriage and your relationship, and your blended family, and you can see how you thought of things. One of the things that for myself, you know, before I got married, uh, before I married my wife, was I thought that, oh, for me, a deal breaker was marrying a woman with children. That was my deal breaker. <laughs> so how did I get in a blended family? if marrying a woman with children was a deal breaker. 
Well, when I met my wife, I mean, it was like, you know, this is the one. This is the woman for me. And the reality was she had children. And so I had to look at this thing in totality and say, you know what? Am I going to allow the fact that she has children be something that breaks the deal? Or is it going to be a deal breaker? Or am I going to really assess this uh, situation for what it is? Look at it in its totality and see how not only I could benefit from it, but that they could benefit from me. And so I begin to sit down and I begin to like, uh, there's some exercises, man, that you learn over the years where I, I wrote down the pros and the cons. I wrote down what life would be if I made that decision and what I believe life would be if I didn't make that decision. And I just, I looked at those things and I weighed things out and life was far better with me making this decision, in my opinion, than it was with me not making that decision. And then I had to look at, okay, are there some examples that I have in my life that will assist me in that decision-making process? And so what I realized was that, hey, I already have examples. I have men and women in my life that are a true blessing and that are, I mean, that really assisted me in my upbringing. And so once I began to really look at that and when I was like, wow, you know what? I already got these examples right here. So, I mean, what am I tripping about? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I got examples. I got men in my life that have taken uh, my cousins and have raised them as their very own. And so I've already seen that you can do this, that you can be a success. And they did it so well that if I didn't know that they weren't the biological fathers, there was there was no behavior that they uh, showed me or there was nothing that they revealed to me that would make me think otherwise. And so those were some of the things that really assisted me early on. But let's go into some of the statistics, and then we're going to jump right into this. Because I'm telling you guys, this is one of my favorites. I could talk about this all day, every day, because there are just some things that deal breakers, and there are just some things that break the deal. And so the first statistic is 42% of adults have at least one step relative, with 30% indicating that they have a step or half sibling. And now I know a lot of times we talk about children, and we talk about parents, but this is just even with the extended. It says 42% of adults have at least one step relative. So all of us got, you know, most of us have somebody in our family or our immediate family uh, that, that is there because of the marriage relationship, that blendedness. And so then it says 30% indicating that they have a step or half sibling. And I thought about... Uh, <laughs> I thought about the young lady that uh, hosts that that owns the radio station that we are part of, and I'll never forget uh, when we did our first episode with her. Her father was on, but what was so funny was they never looked at their their family and their relationship as being blended. And so, as we begin to discuss different dynamics as relates to the blended family, and we begin to discuss different things as related to the blended family, it became clear, obvious that they were a blended family. And it, I mean, I tell you guys, it was hilarious because how in the world are you in a family for 20, 25, 30 years and not even understand or realize you're in a blended family? But that's the design of this thing. And that's the purpose of In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman to give you the essentials, to give you the tools, to give you the pieces to the puzzle that makes it so complete that you yourself don't even realize that your relationship is blended. And so the second one is the 1990 census stated there will be more blended families than original families by the year 2000. And so we know we in 2019. So if they were estimating that by the year 2000, there will be more blended families than original families, then you got to just believe, guys. I mean, according to what you see on a daily basis, there's probably about 75% of families that are blended right now. And that number is continually rising, man. It's continually rising. 
And so that's why there's such a need. There's such a significance for a program such as this that will bring insight, clarity, understanding, revelation, and information that you can take, that you can uh, digest, that you can ruminate on, regurgitate, ruminate, regurgitate, ruminate, and then let that thing pass through so that you can get all the nutrients that are necessary to build a strong and vibrant, vibrant family. And so uh, this, the third statistic is 75% of step families complain of not having access, access to resources uh, as a step family. And so, there, I mean, listen, there's information out there, and I wish I had some of the books that I've read. I mean, I, I got a ton of them. I'm a reader because leaders are readers, and I'm a type of guy, I mean, I'll read the back of a soda can. You know, if I drunk soda, I mean, I just I read like that. And because I like information, I like to be informed. I like to have understanding. Scripture says and all you're getting, get understanding. So there are some things that, that as it relates to life that I just need to understand. And for me, understanding is getting that information, reading, getting that knowledge so that I could properly apply it. And so. You know, there are people that's complaining about not having these resources. And, you know, we, um, wow, we had, a, we our first book was The ABCs of the Blended Family, a very short read, but it's a very awesome read. We take you through the alphabets from A to Z and give you some building blocks where you can apply or you can put in place to build your family plan. Excuse me. And so, you know, we want to make sure that we address that. Then it says 60% of African-Americans report having a step relative, 45% report having a step or half sibling compared to 39 and 26 respectively of Caucasians. And we know that uh, culturally, uh, those numbers are different. Uh, it, it's just what it is, you know what I'm saying? Some culture, cultures believe uh, in divorce, believe in uh, blending families less than other cultures. And so, you know, that, but that's still good to know because, it, again, it crosses all cultures. But the reality is, again, some cultures just have this uh, in, in a less amount than others. Uh, the next one is the likelihood of having a step relative and complex family and sibling relationships is increased for Blacks, the younger cohort of, of adults and adults without college degrees. So basically what they're saying is uh, the likelihood of, of having a blended family is increasing in the African-American community, especially uh, with the younger adults. And, and then, then they get really try to get technical with it. They say, and then even with those that are, are uh, less degreed or, or less educated, basically what they were trying to say. And so, again, guys, it's just important to have this information because when you really begin to backtrack and really begin to assess uh, the things you see in your community, especially as it relates to the blended family, you can now begin to see where some of these statistics are going and where they even got these statistics from. And so I thought that was important. And then the last one, it says 45 percent of those without college degrees have a step relative and 34 percent have a step or half sibling compared to. And again, same thing. And so um, I love statistics. I'm a stats guy. Uh, in my business major, that's something that I excelled in. And so, I mean, it's just, to me, it's just amazing how we can compile information and come with the surmise of what's what based upon what we see. And so tonight, guys, we're going to be talking about deal breakers versus things that break the deal. Deal breakers versus things that break the deal. And I've got quite a few of these things, man. <laughs> I got quite a few of them, man. And guess what? I'm not going to tell you what's a deal breaker. And I'm not going to tell you that's what, what's something that breaks the deal. I'm just going to tell you what we got down here as deal breakers and what we have down here as things that break the deal. And then you decide. But I want to encourage you in your decision making process that you really assess what you're looking at and why you call these deal breakers and why you even call these things that break the deal. Because some of these things are so minute are so uh, uh, miniature, so uh, insignificant that we just really make it something that it shouldn't be. And so, again, I share with you guys what was mine. So that's number one. Do you want children? 
Yes, no, how many, why, or why not? This could be a deal breaker for some people. This could be something that break the deal. You know, I'm finding out in these days and times, man, that there are a lot of people that don't want children. There are a lot of people, and it's unfortunate because a lot of times people enter into relationships because they love that person, because they can't see themselves without that person, but then they haven't really gone through these questions, these questions to really assess whether or not this relationship is going to be beneficial. Because you can have feelings, you can have emotions, you can have all these things for individuals. But if you don't sit down and talk some things out, if you don't come to an understanding and get some clarity as relates to your desires as well as their desires, as relates to your goals as well as their goals, as relates to what you intend on doing in life as a compared or relates to what they're doing, then guess what? It's, you're going to make a mess of things. It's going to be a very frustrating uh, situation in hand. And so, again, do you want children? Yes, no. How many? Why Why not? Let me tell you guys, it's going to be important, imperative, paramount that this is a question that you ask before you get married. If you're going to go into this blended family dynamic, that's going to be something you need to ask. Because now, again, there's so many different things or so many different ways a blended family is comprised. And so we're not just going to make it just one way, but understand if you have, if that person has a child and you don't have any children, but they're anticipating or desiring or hoping that when you guys get married, that you'll have a child and then now you're blending a family, then guess what? If that's not something that you want, that's something that needs to be discussed. Why are you going to waste time, energy, resources, in something that you really don't want. And so I was just want to bring that out. The second one is, can we discuss money? Deal breaker or things that break the deal? Money is both. Money is both a deal breaker and something that breaks the deal. Not can, it does. And so this, this is a conversation, man, that if you haven't had this conversation before you said I do or I will, then I implore you, man. I encourage you. I I beg of you, I admonish you, have this conversation. You want to have this conversation as it relates to money? Man, let me tell you something, because money can have folks acting funny. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you don't have this discussion about money, money can have folks acting funny. I remember uh, one of the pastors in the ministry before uh, he launched out for his own, before he was launched out, let me clarify that, before he was launched out to start his own uh, ministry, he used to make this statement. He remember a time early on in his marriage that his take home money didn't take him home. And so you got a lot of people, man, when it comes to these finances, that they unfortunately, their take home to them, their take home money isn't taking them home. And even if, it's, even, and even if it's taking them home, it's not letting them in the door. <laughs> and if it's letting them in the door, it's not letting them in the bedroom. And if it's letting them in the bedroom, it's not letting them in the bed. And so these things, man, can become a deal breaker. And they can be something that break the deal. And so this is have to be a conversation piece that you have to have. You got to discuss what's your goals? Uh, what, are, what, are, what are your desires? as it relates to taking care of the family, provide for the family, uh, the future of the family, the vision of the family, monetarily. What are, where are we at right now? How much money is saved? How much money is being spent? How much money is being made? You know, there are a lot of different things, man, that people enter into this marriage relationship, especially when it surrounds money, they have no idea. And so now you enter into this reunion, you enter into this relationship, you enter into this dynamic, and what would have been a deal breaker is now something that's breaking the deal because you would have wished early on you would have found this out so you wouldn't even have gone through this. There's nothing more disappointing, man, to enter into this blended family dynamic and got to get out of it because you didn't take the proper time to discuss some things. You didn't take the time to assess some things and look at some things and, and ponder on some things to make sure that that was the right decision to make. And so, man, can we discuss money? How was it earned? Spent. 
excuse me, how was it earned? How was it spent? How was it saved? How was it handled? Who will handle the finances and the bills? Will we share bank accounts? Or will this be uh, uh, will this be a setup? You know what I'm saying? Will we have different accounts? These are all, when you talk about money, these are all the questions that need to be asked, not just of yourself, but of the of the person you're intended on going into this blended family with. Because if you don't ask, them, ask those questions now, your understanding about this is going to be warped later on because you're going to be in this thing thinking that you're on the same page and you're going to find out you guys not even on the same page because you want a joint account, but they want a separate account. You want to do this together, but they want to do this separately. You want you don't even know how much they make. You don't even all these different questions you have because you haven't taken the time early on beforehand to properly discuss these things. I remember early on, man, I mean, it, the struggle was real. I mean, the struggle, the struggle, six figures was, was just a dream. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was a real desire, but it wasn't manifested. And so I remember, man, it was like, I don't want to discuss finances because I'm not really bringing nothing home. And I can remember my wife asking me questions and I'm so upset and so frustrated because as a man, I wasn't bringing home what I wanted to. Not that I wasn't making decent money or good money, but when you're not doing what you know you can do and when you're not doing what you know that you could do or what you should be doing and you're limited just because of your decision making process, that could be a frustrating thing. I know it was for me. And so I had to man up. I had to deal with that. I had to look myself in the mirror and say, you're not what your paycheck says you are. You're more than that. You're the head and not the tail. You're above only and never beneath. You're a lender and not a borrower. And these are things, a borrower, and these are things that I would tell myself on a consistent daily basis. Until those things became manifest, you're creative. Money comes to me. My nature attracts money. The fear of lack has been broken and has no power over me. I hear my father's voice and a voice of intimidation and limitations I choose not to follow. These are confessions that I had to make on a daily basis to put myself in a position that I can do the things for my family that I desire to do. And I can take care of my family the way I desire to take care of it. And even when things didn't go quite the way I wanted to, I still had the faith to believe that all things were possible. But because I began to have conversations, it put me in that position. And I'm telling you guys, you're going to have to have this money conversation. You're going to have to discuss money. You're going to have to talk about money because if you don't talk about it now, you're going to talk about it later. So the next one is, can we talk about sex? <laughs> -wee. That's a big one right there. Can we talk about sex? Man, listen. Sex is huge. Sex is, is oh man, like you would not believe. You want to talk about sex. You want to talk about the frequency. You want to talk about the preferences. You want to talk about the uh, the fantasies. You want to talk about masturbation. You want to talk about uh, pornography, expectations. You want to talk about bad sex, uh, low, high sex drive. All these things as it relates to sex, you want to talk about. Because guess what? If you don't talk about them, that's going to, that's, that's going to be an expectation that somebody has that's not going to be fulfilled. You know how many relationships break up because people refuse to have the sex talk? People refuse to talk about the frequency. They, they refuse to talk about the preferences. There are preferences when it comes to sex, man. There's frequencies of expectation when it comes to sex. And you got to talk about these things because guess what? For some people, they're deal breakers. For some, they're things that break the deal. Because you can have, for some people... Going into this thing, listen, if we ain't having sex four or five times a week, we can't get married. If we ain't doing it like this, or if, if this is not the plan to do it this way, we, we're not doing this. I don't care what they bring to the table. I don't care how compatible you guys are. I don't care how great you are together. Sex is huge. Don't get into this, this dynamic 
thinking that sex won't play a role because yes, it will. That scripture says, if you don't get that area right, you're responsible for that spouse. That wow, wow. People don't want to hear that. No, no, they grown. They make their own decisions. No, because the two shall become one flesh. And if you don't handle your end of this bargain, if you don't take care of what you need to take care of, as it relates to a husband, as it relates to a wife, if you hold it back, if, if you dangling that that carrot over their head, then guess what? When things don't go the way you plan for them to go and they begin to go another route, then guess what? Understand this. is You are the one that invited that into the relationship. You are the one that opened up that door. And I know some people that ain't going to like that. They're going to feel like, how is that so? I don't agree with you. I, this not about, I don't need you to agree with me because <laughs> I know what's true. And scripture is true. And I'm telling you what the word says. And so, you got to get an understand. That's why you got to. That's why we're talking about this, because you need to get an understanding about sex as it relates to being a deal breaker or something that breaks the deal. You got to talk about the fantasies, man. Guess what? There's some fantasies that people have and you got to talk about those things. I don't care how crazy they may seem. You got to have a conversation. You got to at least know if you're not going to participate. At least, you know. Then you got to talk about masturbation. You got to talk about all those different things. Because guess what? Everybody don't please everybody. There's some things that happen in relationships, man. You hear over time where folks ain't really getting theirs like they getting theirs. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And so they feel like they got to finish the job off. Well, guess what? That's something that needs to be talked about. Because for some, that's a deal breaker. And for some, that's something that breaks the deal. Then you talk about pornography. You guys heard my story, man. I was introduced to pornography at a very young age. I'm talking about, I probably, wow, maybe <laughs> three, four years old. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my, <laughs> my parents were something. <laughs> they was something. You know, they, they won't save them. You know, they, they was a little wild. And so, I mean, they, they, they were readers too. Let me put it like that. They were readers. And because they were readers, I became a reader. <laughs> and so at a very young age, man, I was introduced to some things that was just like, whoa. And that, and I'm talking about it followed me from childhood to adulthood. It followed me from the unsaved arena to the saved arena. And so these are things that you're going to have to discuss because there are people right now, man, I don't care how old they are, they're struggling. I mean, I'm talking about bound with pornography. Ba I mean, bound with that. Why? Those images. And again, that's why you need to talk about those things. You need to have that discussion. Because if you have that discussion, then freedom and liberty can take place. But if you don't have that discussion, it'll become easy for a person to hide behind those things. I remember I did it for years. I hid behind it. I hid behind titles and I hid behind positions and I hid behind all these things because I didn't want to address what was right there before me. Because this is something, again, I'm talking about, I was introduced to this as a very young child. And so this was, these are images that were deep bedded. I'm talking about from the beginning. And a lot of people have that struggle because you're talking about deep rooted things that are just in their spirit, man, and it's in their soul, and it's in them, and they have to have that release to, to get rid of that. And this discussion will assist them in that. So you got to talk about expectations, bad sex. What, you know, what are we going to do, man, if, if it just ain't good? You know, what are we going to do if, 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 man, like, you know, it's because you're talking about a blended family, so it's apparent that this is not the first time. When you talk about a blended family, it's apparent that sex isn't the first time you guys had some. It's not the first time you've been in that type of relationship. And so what do you do, man, when it just don't measure up? You know, that has to be a conversation because for some people, they've gone down that road. And for some people, that's where they're at right now. And so the struggle is, do we even stay together? Because, hey, man, you know, they stiff. They just want to lay there. You know, they just don't want to move. They don't want to do nothing. Well, you got to have that come. Be a deal breaker. We might not even go down this road. Or it could be something that break the deal. Now that we down this road, we got to walk away from it. But you have to have that discussion.
the next one. How much time? Wow, was that was that was that a lot for you guys? <laughs> how much time will we spend with family? How much time will we spend with family? This is big. This is big, guys. Because for some people, man, that could be a deal breaker. Spending a lot of time with family, that could be a deal breaker. Or it could be something that breaks the deal. You know what I'm saying? I mean, again, like like, like I use my, my wife and I for an example. It was just me and my sister, and we're 10 years apart, me being the oldest. And so our relationship is a lot different than my wife and her siblings' relationship because it was 11 of them. You know, two gone on to be in glory, but it was 11 of them. And so their family dynamic was a lot different than my family dynamic. And so for my wife, being around a lot of people was easy for her. It was cool for her. For me, it was a little difficult because, again, me and my sister being 10 years apart, me being the eldest, I was used to being by myself. And even when she was coming up, she was a kid. She was a little baby. She couldn't relate to me. So it wasn't like we were having conversations and I could feed off of her and she could feed off of me and we could give each other advice. And so for me, it was a little different. So I would be in family functions and I would just be to myself with my wife. She was just in, you know, communicating with everybody and flowing. And so again, how much time will we spend with family? Because for some people, man, listen, I don't want to be around your family like that. <laughs> I don't even want to be around my family like that. You think I want to be around your family like that? Guess what? That could be a deal breaker. Or it could be something that breaks the deal because now that you're in it, you understand that that's a problem. And if you don't have that discussion, let me tell you guys, we encourage you guys to have these discussions, man, because there's nothing more disappointing than seeing people go to divorce court. There's nothing more disappointing, man, to see people walk away from a relationship that can bless millions, all because they didn't take the time to have a proper conversation beforehand. And now that they in it, they still won't take the time to have a proper conversation, even being in it. Because guess what? There's some things you may not even discuss. A lot of stuff that we share with you guys, excuse me, a lot of things that we share with you guys, these are discussions, unfortunately, that we had afterwards. These were discussions that we had afterwards because we had no one to tell us, you need to talk about that. You need to discuss that. You need to find out about that because this could be something that haunts you guys later on. And so we found a lot of things through trial and error, but we were sensitive enough to hear proper instructions once we saw it. Because for us, we didn't even know what to seek. And so a lot of things we went through, we, okay, this is what we need to get understanding about here. This is what we need to get understanding about there. This is what we need to get understanding about there. And so a lot of things as we went through this or as we were going through this, we found out we needed to get understanding, clarity, and wisdom and knowledge as it relates to those different areas and topics. And so how much time we spend with family? How much time we spend with your parents? How much time we spend with the siblings? How much time we spend with in-laws and cousins? These are things, man, that have to be discussed because like for me, my cousins were my siblings. Growing up, my cousins were my siblings because, again, I, me and my sister, we were 10 years apart, me being the eldest. And so I had a lot of cousins and on, on my father's side. I'm the, I was primarily the middle child. So there was a group that, that uh, my grandmother's children were older, and then there was a group that was under, and I was like the link between everybody else. <laughs> probably to this day, I'm probably still that link. Or they probably look at me still that way. I can relate to the youngest ones. I can relate to the oldest ones. While they might not be able to relate to each other, I can be. I can bridge that gap. And so that was that was. Those were the individuals I spent my time with. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you gotta have that discussion. How much time are we gonna spend with the in-laws? You know what I'm saying? Okay, on this holiday. Uh, we going to your family on this holiday. We going to my family. These are discussions you're gonna have to have, guys, because again, they could be deal breakers, or they could be things that break the deal. Because there's some people I found out, man, they just want to have holidays with their family, and it's not even a concern about your family. <laughs> you know, your your family don't mean nothing as long as they're happy and they spend the time with their family. That's all that matters. But guess what? That I'm unfortunately that may become a something that breaks the deal. 
Because everybody wants their family to be important. Everybody wants their family to be on top. And so you guys got to have these discussions, man, to make sure that you're giving equal time and fair time as it relates to your relationship and your time management with your family and your friends, your siblings, the whole nine yards. Uh, then we talk about household chores, deal breakers versus things that break the deal. You know, traditionally, I mean, I'm, unfortunately, I, I, and I don't even know why I would say traditionally because we're in such an untraditional time right now that traditionally this doesn't even apply. I mean, I know when I was growing up, uh, a lot of a lot of young ladies were homemakers or or at least knew how to make the home, knew how to take care of home. A lot of young ladies knew how to cook. A lot of young ladies uh, knew how to clean. A lot of young ladies knew how to uh, do laundry and, and wash dishes and, and all the iron and all the different things. Where we're living in a day and time now where a lot of young ladies don't know how to do that. A lot of young men don't know how to do that. And so we're talking about household chores. These are things you're going to have to discuss. Who's going to do the cooking? Who's going to do the cleaning? I remember for at least the first three years of our marriage, my wife didn't wash clothes. Every Saturday, I took that responsibility on myself. I didn't want her to do that. That was my responsibility. That was my assignment. That was my job. And for me, it was easy because I was raised washing clothes. I was raised cleaning the house. My father was a general. This was a guy that would do the white glove test on you. <laughs> I mean, you know, we and we and to this day, I don't even have a lot of furniture in my house because I I, I, I had flashbacks growing up. <laughs> my father would be like, okay, you you dust it. Now he's gonna go and wipe his finger down the wood. I mean, because we had wood everything, like wood, wood floors, wood, you name it, it was wood. And so he was the kind of cat that would take his finger to see if it was any dust there. And if it was dust there, guess what Brandon was going to do? He was going to clean the whole house. Not that right there. It wasn't no, nah, man, you know what? This ain't clean right here. You need to go and wipe that over again. Nah, bro, you need to clean all this because if this dirty, nine times out of 10, that's dirty. <laughs> and so these are the discussions you're going to have to have. But for me, cleaning was easy. I don't have a problem with dusting. I don't have a problem with sweeping, mopping, back in the floors, making beds, folding clothes, you name it. When it comes to the household, you come to my house and you see how the house is decorated. That's me. That's me. That, that's, 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 that's my hand on that. You know what I'm saying? Because I like those things. I was raised like that. And so it became a part of my DNA. It became a part of my nature. But these are discussions that you're going to have. Now, my wife, that girl could cook. <laughs> she the she she the chef boy out here in the house, you know. Now I can cook, you know, and in my opinion, I might be a little bit better, you know. But I can cook. But she she the you know when it comes to cooking meals, she be the one. But that's that's something that we set ourselves on. This is okay. This is what we're gonna do. This is the role I'm gonna have. This is the role you're gonna have. And you know there there were there were seasons where I did a majority of the cooking. Then, then there were seasons where she did the majority of the cooking. We compliment each other in that way. But you guys got to have that discussion because you need to know who's going to be doing what, when, and how. And so I want to make sure, guys, that you have that. Addictions. Have discussions on addictions, man. I'm going to tell you. we. I, mean, <laughs> I can tell you guys some stories about folks in relationships with addictions. And you you get in this relationship, and you don't know old girl got an addiction. You don't know old boy got an, an, an addiction. You don't know that they're secret drug addicts because they haven't even shared with you uh, that they're uh, secretly on drugs, or or that you know they they and you you notice that they they drink a little bit more than normal or more than they used to at times. Well, guess what? Those are addictions, and you need to have those discussions. And for me. I would encourage you guys to even go further than just them. You know, like getting a, a person's credit report, you need to get a person's family report. I need to know how your mother was. I need to know how your father was. I need to know how your siblings are because that's going to give me a lot of information as it relates to you. That's one of the things that I would, I mean, I'm, I'm anybody that know me 
that knew me, if you're going to know me, this is something you need to know. I'm open. I'm transparent. What you see is what you get. What I mean by that is it ain't, it's nothing hidden, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm the same way and when I'm by myself. I'm the same way when I'm with my family. I'm the same way when I'm with my friends. There's no light switch that I turn off and on with these different personalities. That's not me. I'm not schizophrenic. You know, I don't have multiple personalities. I know who I am and whose I am. And so this is what you're going to get. You're going to get somebody that's forward, that's blunt, but I'm caring, I'm loving, I'm compassionate. You know what I'm saying? I just want the best, period. But you need to know these things because there's some things that, that are uh, generational that your spouse may deal with or may be dealing with that if you don't have these conversations, you don't even know their grandfather was a drunk. One of the reasons why I don't particularly drink myself, not because it's a sin to drink, because scripture doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say that. So that's not the reason why I don't do that. I don't do it because I've seen the struggles that my family went through for generations because of alcohol. And so I just decided I didn't want to participate in that because I didn't want to take my family through what I thought I saw my family going through growing up. That was the decision that I made. But guess what? A lot of people don't make that decision. A lot of people aren't mature as it relates to those areas. And so they're continuing repeating cycles from generation to generation to generation to generation. And if you don't have these discussions, if you don't dig deep and find out how they were brought up, what they were accustomed to doing, what they were accustomed to seeing and being around, and you see, and, and you find all these addictions, that's something you're going to have to think about because that could be a deal breaker. And I'm going to tell you something, it's definitely going to be something that breaks the deal. And so you need to have that discussion. Then we're talking about abuse. Deal breaker, things that break the deal. If you're in an abusive relationship, man, let that be a deal breaker. We don't even need that to break the deal. You know early on, you know going into this, that you're in an abusive relationship. I don't care if it's physical. I don't care if it's verbal. I don't care if it's emotional. Mental abuse is abuse. And you know going into this thing that you're dealing with that. They're going to give you some telltale signs of their abusive nature. They're going to give it to you. And you can play dumb all you want to. But there may come a time when a person can't assist and save you because you won't be honest with yourself. And so these are things that are deal breakers. And again, things that break the deal. You're going to have to have these discussions, man. You're going to have to listen. Go talk with their mother. Go talk with their father. Talk with their siblings. How were they in their past relationships? How do they treat girls? How do they treat women? You, you talk to anybody in my past, man, they're going to tell you. I was When it comes to women, bro, honorable. He was all, always respected women, always honored women. I was a little, you know, a little knucklehead, you know, growing up, you know, and, and did some foolish things. But as it relates to honoring, and that's a whole nother level right there. And so, but you want to, you want to know, you want to go back further because guess what? They only going to give you what they know. And if they know slapping, if they know cussing, if they know barking, if they know uh, uh, intimidation, if they know all these things, guess what? You're going to soon be a participant. I don't care if it's male or female you will soon be a participant because we know and we living in a time, man, where there's some rough women out here. It's some women, man, that, that's more abusive than, than dudes will ever be. I'm talking about for real. And so guess what? But you got to, you got to know where that came from. You got to have that discussion. And when you see a sign, don't ignore that sign. Don't just think that's a one-time thing. Nine times out of 10, that's just the beginning. That's the choir before the storm. And so you need to address these things. You need to have these conversations and say, you know what? This, this, this is where it's falling at. And if it happened again, this is where it's going to be. You got to you gotta nip that in the bud. That's not something you go on year after year after year after year. If people say, you know what? It's easier said than done. You're right. But guess what? It still can be done. Whether it's easier said or done or not, it still can be done. It's just a decision you're going to have to make. It's just a choice you're going to have to make. 
And when you make it, understand, there may be some consequences. There may be some repercussions, but I'd rather deal with that than to deal with that. You can deal with this or you can deal with that. You can deal with this or you can deal with that. You can deal with this or you can deal with that. You can deal with this or you can deal with that. <laughs> so you have to make a decision, man. You will either deal with this or you're going to deal with that. Make a decision. Make a choice. Because guess what? Whichever way you go with it, if you deal with this, you're going to deal with that. But better cool believe I'd rather deal with that than to deal with this. And so I had that conversation. Uh, fidelity. Got to talk about that stuff, man, because some folks don't know what it means to be in a monogamous, a monogamous relationship. But you got to have those conversations. Because some people think, you know, uh, uh, three's company. <laughs> you know, some people think they Jack Ripper. You know, they think they got a blonde and a blue net. And so you got to understand these things, man. You got to have these conversations because deal breaker versus things that break the deal. And that right there, my friend, should be a deal breaker. And if you're in it, it should be something that breaks the deal. But you can work that out. But if it's continual and they don't want to change, oh, nah, nah, you broke the deal, buddy. You broke the deal. Now, if we're not married and we intended on getting married, we intended on coming into this blended family, that's a deal breaker. Because if you did that before we said yes and I do and I will, man, I'm all, I'm, that, that, you done gave me an expectation that this is something you're going to do. I, I shouldn't even believe otherwise. Why am I going to fool myself and make myself believe that you're going to now be monogamous, that you're going to now be a, a, a loyal uh, to me when cheating is your thing? You want to open marriage and you want to you want to swing. Man, if we ain't on the swing set, ain't no swinging in here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We ain't playing baseball, ain't no swinging. If we ain't golfing, there's no swinging. And so you're going to have to have those discussions because guess what? It might sound funny. It might sound crazy. But people are dealing with this every single day. Every single day, they're dealing with this deal breaker, this issue of fidelity. They're dealing with it cheating. They're dealing with open marriages. They're dealing with swinging. They're dealing with these three things, man. And so we want to bring this to light because guess what? You're going to have to decide, man, is this going to be the deal break or the thing that breaks the deal? And you got to know early on. You got to know like ASAP because why are you going to waste your time, your energy, and your resources when this is something that's just going to tear you apart? Then we talk about laziness. Wow. Deal breaker, man, or something that breaks the deal. Don't want to work. You know what I'm saying? Don't want to work. Now, let me say, there may come a time, man, where the woman may, the wife may make more than the husband. That, that may be the entire marriage, the entire relationship. But at least he should want to work. At least he should want to get out and to contribute to the household. At least he should want to play his role in his part. That's something, that's a given. For a man, that's a given. You should want to do that. You the, you the house band. You're the one that keeps that thing encompassed together. That's what a husband is. A husband is a house band. That's two words combined to one. Husband, house band, house gatherer, housekeeper. That's your job, man. And so even if she's making more money, guess what? Even if she's bringing in more dough, you still should be contributing. You she shouldn't have to make all the money and come home and cook and clean and come home and wash clothes and come home and do homework assignments and come home and run bubble bath and come home and, and all these different things. She shouldn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? So these are things that you have to discuss. Don't want to help out around the house. Don't want to help out with the children. Don't want to do anything but play games, play video games. You know, but again, laziness. Deal breaker versus things that break the deal. These are something, man, you see the signs. You already know, man, you, you've been over her house. You already know if her, if her house dirty, then guess what's going to happen when y'all get married? Your house going to be dirty. <laughs> if his house dirty and he got pizza boxes and he got underwear and drawers and socks all on the floor and, and, and soda bottles and cans all over the place, and this is all in the sink. Guess what's going to happen to your house? It's going to look the same way. 
Don't think because you're getting into this relationship that you're going to change them. No, they're telling you who they are before you get in this. So that's going to now have to be either a deal breaker or unfortunately, it may be something that break the deal. But it should be a discussion. Who's going to make sure we do this? And guess what? We're not going down this road because these are my expectations. Too needy, codependent. <laughs> oh, man. I'm glad my wife ain't here on that one. Because she can call me needy. But I needs me some her. But no, but there are some people that's too needy, man. Some people that just really codependent, really can't do nothing on their own. That's going to have to be a discussion, man, because guess what? That could be a deal breaker or it could be something that breaks the deal. And so you're going to have to have that conversation because you want to make sure, hey, listen, you might need some friends. You might need a hobby. You 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 might need to get out, get out and do something else with your time. And so, but this going to have to be a conversation piece. Because again, there's some. For me, again, I wasn't used to a lot because I was just me and my sister, 10 years apart, me being the eldest. My wife was different. So she can be around. She can be, you know, I mean, she like like this. I mean, even with the girls today, all of them grown. She like even with the grandkids. I mean, they they like huggy, kissy, pulling ears, nose. I mean, all kind of crazy, weird stuff they be doing. <laughs> that just like, like yeah, y'all got some issues playing with ear lows, playing with the tip of the noses, you know what I'm saying? Cheats, all that stuff. I mean, my they they just they what they are. I love them, you know what I mean? But again, there's some people that don't like that, some people that can't get with that, and so that has to be a discussion. There has to be something you talk about because that could be a deal breaker. Hey, yo, yo, man, keep your hands to yourself. I don't like that, I ain't used to that. And so you can't even really relate because you haven't really discussed. You don't even know that's what they like. That's something they like. You know, because we, I, I, my, my wife love an ear. <laughs> I remember early on, man, we'd be sitting down and we'd be sitting beside each other. Before I know it, she done had my ear in her hand. <laughs> Yo, get off my ear. <laughs> Would you keep, keep your hands off my ear? All right, just keep your hands off my ear. And I'll turn around a couple minutes later, the hand right back on my ear. I mean, it's, it, now you look back at it, it's hilarious. But again, we, I didn't know that was her thing. You know what I'm saying? That's just something she liked. But again, it could be a deal breaker or it could be something that breaks the deal. Uh, lack self-control. Can't stop yourself from doing things that you shouldn't do, especially in hard and rough times. Uh, not level headedness, don't make sound judgment. That, hey, that could be a deal breaker, man. Or it could be something that breaks the deal. You know, you got some folks, man, they just flop off at the mouth, they fly off the handle, they don't think about uh, consequences before they do whatever. They're just going to do it because they three times seven plus and they feel like they're grown, they can do what they want to do. And so they don't really assess the fact or look at the fact that if I make this decision, if I make this choice, it's going to be it's going to bring a negative effect to my family. Uh, my family's going to be affected negatively and things may not be the way I want them to be. And so uh, you're going to have to have these conversations, man, like really like, OK, hey, yo, uh, you need to control yourself. You know what I'm saying? There's some people, man, that just I mean, um, you, you know, you, you you know you're working on buying a house, but you want to go shopping all the time. You know, you know you want to do this, but you, you know you got to have on the, the the latest gear and the latest fashions and all these different things. And so, lack self control, man. I mean, just like you know, you know those pants getting a little tight, you know, but you don't want to put that you don't want to put that piece of cake down, you know, you don't want to put that burger down, you know, you you don't want to put that milkshake down. You don't want to go for a walk. You don't want to get up and go to the gym. Just lack self-control. And so all these different things, man, you're going to have these, have to have these conversations. Because I, I tell people all the time, a gym membership is a lot less expensive than high blood pressure medicine. <laughs> a gym membership is a lot less expensive than diabetes medicine. A gym membership is a lot less expensive than chemotherapy. A gym membership is a lot less expensive than 
somebody constantly giving you needles and shots in the bedpan and all those different things. And so you got to talk about these things, man. If you see this, if you see a pattern of, of a lack of self-control, again, deal breaker versus things that break the deal. There are some things, in my opinion, that's just deal breakers. Now, there are some things that when you're immature, you call a deal breaker. And for some, it really can't be a deal breaker. And for some, it could be something that breaks the deal. But there are some, some things that are emphatically deal breakers. And when you make a decision other than that deal being broke, then whatever comes along with that, you can't be mad about getting that consequence. You can't get upset about that consequence. Why? Because you chose that. This is something that you chose. Wow. Ooh, got some more to go. But listen, we're almost out of time. I want to thank you guys. If you have, listen, if you got any questions, uh, any comments, anything you want to uh, get clarified as it relates to this episode of Deal Breakers versus Things That Break the Deal, listen, hit us up. We are a blended family. Our email address is we are a blended family at gmail.com. Again, we are a blended family at gmail.com. That's our, our email address. And so if you want really some clarity on anything that I've discussed thus far on tonight, uh, this evening, make sure that you send it to us. We would love to come back and really uh, talk about these things in a little bit more detail to give a little bit more clarity, a little bit more understanding. Listen, if you want something that's going to help you build this blended family, you want to get that book called The ABCs of the Blended Family. That is a powerful read. It's a real short read uh, by two of my favorite authors, Brandon and Madeline Hyman. And so you want to make sure you put that in your uh, in your library, in your arsenal, that you can just go to. I mean, again, it's a short read. It's not anything long, but I promise you, there are some nuggets, there are some building blocks in that book that would transform and revolutionize your marriage, your blended family, and your life. And so you want that. Also, you want to tune in Thursday evenings, WJMS365Live.com. You want to tune into that. Uh, man, it's awesome episodes we have. Uh, this is our internet radio station. And I'm telling you guys, it's just phenomenal the things that are happening for Brandon and Madeline Hyman through in the blender. And so we want to encourage you guys to tune into that. Listen, before we go, I want just want to have a word of prayer. Uh, something we don't do as much as we're going to start doing. Uh, but I want to close out in a word of prayer. There are a lot of families, man, that are watching us. I'm talking about we get thousands and thousands of people watching us on a weekly basis. And so I know through and by the spirit of God that there are some marriages, there are some families that are going through. And when I say going through, they're going through. But the operative word is that they're going through. And so I want to encourage you guys on tonight. Um, I want to lift you up. I want to strengthen you that you already win. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. You're already victorious. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this awesome time uh, to share in the blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. I thank you for this episode of Deal Breakers versus Things That Break the Deal. Father, I thank you that whatever they're standing in the need of as it relates to their family, their household, Lord God, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them insight, that you would give them clarity and instruction, that they would have ears to hear your voice. For you say, your sheep know your voice and another they will not follow. So, Father, I thank you in advance that all that shall be accomplished and all that shall be revealed in their lives, for you raised them up for such a time as this to be an example. Even as you even as you raised us up, Father, to be an example, so have you raised them up. And, Father, I thank you for the strength that's even on our lives and in our marriage, for every good thing that's in our apostle and our Dr. Didi marriage and life and ministry is in ours. And so I decree and declare that it's in theirs as well. That, that they will grow up, that they will be all that you will command them to be, do, and have, that they will have and walk in it. And so I give you all glory, honor, and praise for what shall be accomplished and revealed in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I thank you guys for tuning in to In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. And until next week, bye-bye. <laughs>